Hey, welcome to Restoring Christine. We're restoring a 1956 Chevrolet Bel Air. Today's episode is going to be in the replacement of the driver's side rear quarter panel, the rear fender from the door to the rear wheel well. Goes up from about the stainless uh, line all the way down to the rocker panel. This is a store bought panel. It took us about a day and a half to cut it and fit it and get it welded in. If you're interested in seeing how this prog project progressed, please stick around. So what we're going to get into next is this replacement of this fender. And I did a video, a review of the fender panel, store bought. This is ordered from one of the reputable big box places. Um, it's a stamped fender panel, and I gave it a review, and I basically trashed it <laughs> in the review. I wasn't I wasn't super impressed by it. Uh, it just doesn't have crisp lines. So, but you know, and and that's. That came from that review, that negative review came from the thought that this thing is made with a flange on both sides that it was meant to be um, like plug and play. You just trim it, slide it in, weld it, boom, you're done. Well, the fender's dimensions are such that it overlaps everything. It overlaps the door uh, jam, it overlaps the fender well, it overlaps the bottom, uh, the extension of the rocker. It just, uh, in other words, every outside dimension is just a little bit bigger than what it really needs to be. So what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to take this, this fender and I'm going to trim it right at the edge of the door because I don't like any of these lines. These lines are not crisp at all. So I'm going to trim it back to here and all the way down and I'm going to keep the, the flat surface. I'm going to keep the, the underside part. I'm going to keep uh, the flare at the fender, but I'm going to, I'm going to take this back to, to the... Uh, on the car, I'm going to keep this as much as possible. I, I don't have much damage. This is all dented and dinged. The, the camera doesn't really show it very well, but there's rust here, here, there's patches here. This is all uh, gnarly. This is patched. This is all gone underneath. So I'm going to take this all the way back, full height of this. I'm going to cut this horizontally, and that's going to bring it up, up around here somewhere. And then I'm going to cut it back down into the into the wheel well at the edge of the door jam, and that's where I'm going to splice. I'm going to splice it here, across here. I'm going to come somewhere down here, keeping all of this underside part of the new the new piece. And what I've already done so far is I've already struck a line at the top because these are the these are all the mounting holes for the stainless steel. And this fender panel is going to have to eliminate those. It's going to come up above that. So when it does come up above that. I'm going to have to re-establish every one of these holes. So what I did is I drew me a horizontal line. I measured down to each hole, and then I measured horizontally to each hole, and I put all of, all of those reference dimensions up here where I won't be sanding or welding or grinding. So that's my plan, and uh, I'm going to get started with doing that. So I got to cut around the edge. I got to smooth that out. This is very rough. I cutter. I started cutting with the cutter wheel, and then I realized, oh, I don't have the guard on it. And if, the, if this thing shrapnels, then suddenly it's going to go into my face. So, so I brought the replacement panel over here after I cut it, and I marked my fender, and I marked where it, uh, it hit the fender here and, and here. And it doesn't cover these as much as I need it to. So I'm going to have to do a little bit of patching in here and then here anyway. This will probably be really close. I don't know, it'll probably have a blow through problem with welding. But when I splice this in, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do um, um, Fitzy's cut and butt method. So I'm gonna back cut it where it's gonna be on a bit of an angle and, and um, we're gonna leave, I'm gonna leave this rough and then this lat, these pieces will come out after everything's welded in place. So I'm gonna do a rough cut 
to just get this out of the way and then I'll do a final cut as I'm welding it. Okay, I learned me a couple of things. I didn't realize that there was this gasket, that this is the way this is mounted. I was expecting to see spot welds or something here, but the way this is done, I mean, when, I don't know if you saw it in the time lapse, but when I cut this and I cut it free of this line, look how this sprung. Man, boing, I mean, it just like popped. And it is up against the wheel well, so I don't know what's going on with that. I don't know if the wheel well is crushed. I don't think it is, but there's two rubber gaskets, and that's, I guess, what they, they did, or two, it might be one. Yeah, it, it is, it's the shape of a T, a split T that slips over the wheel well. And you see all the sand, well, sand, technically it's glass. This is glass beaded, is what we, what I have done. Oh, look, window part, we'll need that. Okay, so this is the bottom part of the fender, and I just cut it free. I just cut it, I just cut it here and here, and bent it down, and then cut that across. And I'm changing the floor, so this is actually part of the floor. I don't know how I don't know how that ties in the inner the inner panel, but this is this is the inner flange of the floor, so that comes new. I need to get that fender on here, but I don't need to attach it to this. I just need to get this out of the way, not to clean it up to get ready to weld, but just to get that out of the way so that this piece will fit in. And then um, this will be out of the way, and when I change the floor, then I'll spot weld that fender piece here. I'll have to spot weld it after. Maybe I should have been changing the floor first. I don't know. I just don't want to do it. Got those two pieces put in but it's just most of this is gonna be cut away I mean my, my panel comes to here so I'm gonna be cutting it like right right here so most of that goes away anyway I'm gonna take my chances with that one so I'm gonna shut it down for the evening and come back tomorrow and, and, um, and put this panel in so anyway that's it for tonight be back in the morning Well, good morning. Back at it again. So I started working on a fender yesterday, trying to replace that driver's side um, fender right in front of the rear wheel well behind the door. And I got in this morning and as I started cleaning things up and I started looking, I found that um, inside of the car, right, you can't see it from out here, but there's a lip that comes up here. It's like it makes a channel. It comes down, over, and up. And that finishes against the side of the floor pan. So the side of the floor pan also has a lip that turns up show you that on the inside so on the inside you can see Swiss cheese 
So what I have to do is I made a I made a piece, I made a little channel, bent it on my metal brake, and I'm gonna put that, I'm gonna cut that in here. It's gonna have to weld to the floor once we get the floor in, but for now I just need to get this straightened out before I, I figured it's easier when I can get to both sides. So I'm gonna do this now instead of waiting until I have the floor out. Um, I'm gonna try it that way, so so we'll see how it goes. Okay, so I've got the piece fitted in, and this is where you have to pick your battles. I'm going to set this piece right where it needs to go at the right height. I'm going to make sure that the bottom doesn't get interfere with the, the structure of the pan. There's like a lip that comes out, and so I want to make sure that I don't get in the way of that. Um, assuming that the new one looks just like it, so I'm going to keep this at the same height. It's flushed up here, and then back here it's at the same point where, where it was before. But what I mean by pick my battles is I'm going to overlap this. I don't care what this looks like. I just want this to be solid. So I'm going to have an overlapping weld and I'm going to pull this tight and get that welded in and get to it from this side too. So I'm going to be able to get this tightened up. But what I want is I'm going to let the inner panel overlap the, the tray so that when water inevitably leaks in from the window, it'll come down. And if it gets into any of this, I will spray undercoating on this after all of my welding is done. But at least the water will run and it'll run past this as opposed to into it and into the car and getting into a trap. So that's my next part is to go ahead and weld this. I say tack welded, it's not tack welded, it's spot welded, so that's perfect. I'm not, I'm not doing anything more. I'm not doing a full, full weld down the line. It doesn't need to be. It's welded on this seam and it's welded on outside on the other seam, so there's plenty of weld here. This is not tremendous, um, tremendously structural. But now I've got a good flange. I've got a good flange to attach my floor to. I've got, uh, you know, something solid here that, that's going to hold things together. It's not going to rattle around, and if anything ever falls in, you know, we're solid. So let's see what it looks like on the outside. Not pretty, but it's going to work, you know. So this is all replaced, and this this is getting replaced with the floor pan. That's all continu uh, con con congruent, contiguous. <laughs> Let's make up some words. <laughs> it's all contiguous with the uh, with the floor plan. I mean, with the floor floor pan. So we'll get that in. I guess I just can't English this morning. <laughs> Whatever. So are you that guy in the neighborhood, like I'm that guy in the neighborhood that has all the tools and can do all kinds of stuff, no matter whether it's metal or wood or whatever? I just had a neighbor come over with a project and he said, I don't know how to do this. And then next thing you know, an hour later, I'm now getting back in the car because I ended up having to do some woodwork for him just a moment ago. Didn't have to, but that's just that's just my nature and character. I just, I just help everybody. Anyway, so I'm going to get back to this. I'm getting ready to tack in the fender panel, and uh, we'll get we'll continue on. So I just sprayed it with some Eastwood Heavy Duty Anti Rust Black. This is actually a at least five years old. This is um, left over from the Cutlass project, so that's what I undercoated the interior. Remember the days of Z-Bart? I guess if Z-Bart was doing something like this. All right, I got the fender mocked up. Got it sitting right here. It looks pretty good. It's fitting well. Still haven't cut it in, so I've just got a rough opening behind it. And I've got it clamped over here to keep the 
the arch in line. I got it tack welded in three spots, one, two, and then a third down here by the rocker. This rocker, this must have been a replacement rocker that somebody put on, it's indented. This also has an indent, so I have an indent going into an indent, both of them meant to be behind each other, so they're not. Well, that's, that's gonna end up being within the limits of what we can do with body filler. So we'll put that um, when it comes time. I put a patch in right here. Um, did that because there was a, some, some corrosion back in the back side, but I put that patch in, I didn't video it, but it, would, it didn't take long, it took about 30 minutes maybe, if that. So that's where I'm at. I'm getting ready to cut this in, so I'm gonna go have some lunch or something and take a break and come back out here and finish this. I wanna do be finished with this today, but that's a lot of welding. I'm gonna have to take my time because it's a lot of heat and we don't wanna warp anything, so patience wins the day. Hey, if you're liking the content of Restoring Christine, please subscribe. And if you like the individual videos, give us a thumbs up. Do appreciate all the time you spend with us in the garage working on the Bel Air, cruising around in the 71 Cutlass. Um, your time's appreciated. Thank you. One last look. Okay, I've got all the interior cleaned, coated with undercoating. I've uh, got my patch panel underneath there, that channel welded in. And I've got the back side of, of my fender panel coated. That's an undercoating. So I didn't bother coating the edges because it's going to catch on fire as soon as we, uh, we start welding on this. But um, it's a good start. So I'm, gonna, I'm planning on once I get everything all together, I'll undercoat everything on the interior after like I did on the Cutlass. So um, anyway, let's get, let's get going and fit it in. doing I was actually butt butt welding this so I was I had this a little bit long and I cut it behind and then removed the metal from the back but I'm welding on the surface I have a little bit of trouble with a little bit of blow a little bit of blow through in a few spots um, this is something going on with this whole side it's it's hard to keep it from blowing through so I might I might put a little piece of backing strip behind that but I'm really liking the way it's it's flushed out it's flushed out really well it's fitting really, really well. Um, by saving this part of the car, I'm keeping the crisp factory lines and I'm, I'm 
dealing with just a little bit of this um, softening of this line there. But that's so much better than what, we, what we're dealing with. I mean, what we started with was horrible. So this is looking pretty good. I'm pleased with it. I'm gonna continue welding on it. All right, confessional time. <laughs> this takes a lot longer than you might think. This is the second pass on this. I, the welds are fighting me. I don't know, the base metal of the car just seems like it just constantly wants to blow through sooner than this 18 gauge metal of this panel. So I don't know if this is a thinner metal or what, but man, it is fighting me. But anyway, uh, this is my second pass actually. I made one pass on this and then grinded it down and had, I knew I had some, some gaps. So it, was, it, took, it took that much to really get it in. But now I'm, I'm pretty pleased with this second pass. I'm pretty sure that that'll sand out. So all I gotta do now is just take my time and grind this without warping it and then come back and hopefully just pick up a handful of pinholes and a handful of little imperfections, but then hopefully this will be done. This has been many, many hours and my back is hurting and I'm tired. So I'm gonna keep on trucking. A lot of work. All right. This is about all I can give it. Um, it's in great shape. Came out really well. I'm, I'm pleased with it. I got a little bit of a little bit of an indentation over here. I'm not happy with. And then, uh, as I was doing this, um, even though I was welding down here, suddenly I, I, there's a couple of kinks or warps that were up in here, and they just started oil oil canning and. I was trying to control my heat, but I know I probably got a little too hot, and I'm going to have to do some heat shrinking uh, up in up in this area to get this straightened out. It's a dip here, and suddenly there's a bulge here, and there's a dip here, so it's kind of like Surf City, USA right now. But um, yeah, I'm going to have to figure out how to do that. I've never successfully shrunk metal before, but I'm sure I can. I can do it. All right, so that's going to be it for this episode. Appreciate everybody that watches. Thank you for tuning in. Still looking for subscribers, looking for thumbs up. If you like the videos, please give us a, an A-OK. -okay. And if you like the channel, please do subscribe. See you soon. Cheers.